Hello, and welcome to this World Shared Forum. My name is Dr. Jean Connor. I'm a nurse scientist and researcher here at Boston Children's Hospital. I'm the Director of Nursing Research for Cardiovascular and Critical Care. I am thrilled to be joined by our international partner, Dr. Yos Latour. Uh, Dr. Latour is an international specialist in research in our pediatric intensive care community and also our neonatal intensive care community. His area of research, which we'll be hearing over this next time, will be focused in areas of patient and parent satisfaction, care coordination, and family-centered care. So with that, I'd like to welcome you uh, to, to this conversation. And um, first, I thought that maybe we could start with you really describing your um, early years in nursing and how that's led you to uh, where you are today. Well, thank you very much. Um, I've early days when I started off in the uh, in pediatrics in the early 80s, um, there was always a special attention to not only the care of the child, but also the care of the family. Mm. Um, particularly in when I started working in the late 80s in the pediatric intensive care, where the family were at that time not as empowered as currently, so I give them a platform every time I was taking care of the child and the family. I allow them the maximum uh, participation in the care. Mm -hmm. And so that was when you were practicing as a bedside nurse, or was that in another role? Explain yeah, that. that. that uh, early uh, 80s, uh, I was practicing as a bedside nurse okay. because I started off as a pediatric nurse. Then I've then done my uh, pediatric intensive care training. Um, done my pediatric uh, pediatric intensive care bedside uh, period. Uh, went on with um, the pediatric and neonatal intensive care, leading as a nurse manager. Um, however, before that, I've done my master's uh, program in the UK, where I became attached to the to the. Uh, the topic of family-centered care, mm -hmm. the care of the, and, and, and the voice and, and the, the collaboration with the parents in the care of mm -hmm. the uh, child in the units. Mm -hmm. And so how was it that you were able to take that interest and, and really advance the science? What, what were the steps that you did in your, your degree and, and, and how did you operationalize that with science? Yeah, it's, it's very nice to, to, to this question. Uh, when I done my Master of Science project, mm -hmm. it was looking at research priorities in our children's hospital at that time in Utrecht, uh, where actually family-centered care issues became out as one of the top priorities to look at. Mm -hmm. This was an mm -hmm. area of development. Um, besides the, the, the science, um, I had a, a lot of, well, how to say, experiences uh, with uh, bedside and clinically mm -hmm. to work with uh, parents um, even my colleagues would say, yes, you can deal with any kind of demand of the parents, how difficult the demands and how, 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 how challenging the demand uh, sometimes is. Um, so from my master's program, I was able um, to look at the family issues when I went to Amsterdam, and that's the uh, VU um, University Medical Center I was leading as a nurse manager. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to to provide the bedside nurses enough time and staff and uh, resources to continue doing quality improvement projects on family-centered care issues. Mm -hmm. And later on, in, in 10 years ago, in uh, 2003, when I started at the Erasmus Medical Center, Sophia Children's Hospital, um, doing my PhD program. Okay. So the PhD program mm -hmm. for me was an excellent start of uh, because the hospital, Children's Hospital, gave me the freedom mm -hmm. to develop a full research program on family-centered care. Mm -hmm. I, I find it fascinating, your work, and, and how you've been able to take something that I feel is so important to that relationship between nurses, healthcare team, and, and parents, and, and really understanding uh, what it is and almost what it isn't, and how things are not always the same. And so I wondered if you could tell us those beginning studies where you really described what was important to families, what was important to healthcare teams, and, and how was similar and different? 
It's, it's, it's a challenging phase because what happens indeed, what you say, family-centered care is a broad concept. Mm -hmm. we, we hardly don't know actually what it, it theoretically means. Mm -hmm. What are the concepts of family-centered care? Well, now, I, I do believe that most nurses, bedside nurses, know the concept and the theory and, and the, the, the way of doing family-centered mm -hmm. care at the bedside. They know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. However, whether we really work according to the principles of family-centered care mm -hmm. is often neglected or not done. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, in, in a larger research project, you would la f try to first to establish what is it, what is the right. experiences, mm -hmm. what is it what parents really want, mm -hmm. value in the care, what mm -hmm. are the preferences. So I believe that this is how we started off to look at critically and ask the parents, what is it for you like? What mm -hmm. do you want? Mm -hmm. and, uh, how far do you want to go in, in any discussions? Mm -hmm. Even as, as, even if the, 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 the question and the topic of your child becomes very difficult in end-of-life care issues. So this is one part. And then the other part where we started off at simultaneously, we ask all nurses and doctors, tell me, how do you see, how do you feel what you should, we should do as professionals to provide the best optimal care to the parents if mm -hmm. the child is admitted to the hospital? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'd like to invite you at this time to answer a few questions. And in your answering the questions, if you could please provide us with your city and country. In pediatric nursing, family-centered care is related to the care of The correct answer is parents, grandparents, siblings, significant others, and currently, I don't mind if you would add also pets, bring the pets of the child into the hospital. And I, I guess one of the things that, as I was reading your work, that I wondered, um, and maybe others wondered, is was it hard to have uh, families speak about this? Did they want you to ask them? Was it hard to get that information? And then also, was it hard to get that information from healthcare providers? Like how, how is that? Because I think you got such important information, but how, how hard or difficult or maybe not, if you could explain? Well, basically, generally, if you start talking about family-centered care and you ask the, your colleague uh, healthcare professionals like uh, nurses and physicians, they're pretty much willing to share their experiences, to share their knowledge, to tell them what mm -hmm. they believe mm -hmm. is family-centered care issues. Mm -hmm. In contrast with the, with the parents, okay. it's even, even more, more awarding to have them incorporated mm -hmm. in your studies. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few options. We've done a couple of surveys. Uh, mm -hmm. One survey among a large group of parents in the pediatric intensive care, over a thousand, mm -hmm. and we had a response rate of, of almost 65%. In a that's survey fantastic. of parents, fantastic. that's fantastic. enormous high. Yes. Yeah, so very meaningful, it sounds. It is, right? it for, is. For, they want, they want to. Describe this they to They want us. to share right. their experiences yeah. and their knowledge, yeah. the parents. Huh? I, I think what really translated to me is how your work was very symbolic of patient and family-centered care, how you actually conducted your research, and that there was a partnership right from the beginning. And, yeah. and I often don't see that. I think that we, we talk about how we should partner with families and really bring them into the conversation early. And it was very striking to me how that was a constant parallel for you. And it was just very thoughtfully done. And I think really was probably meaningful for both sides. Yeah. yeah. Have you shared your work, the results with the healthcare professionals as well as the parents? So you're getting this very meaningful information from parents. How, have you translated that back to them? Like how, yeah. how, is, how do you handle that, I guess? Well, that, that I believe if you do research, mm -hmm. you always have to, it doesn't stop when you, f when you finish your analysis, when you have your results, mm -hmm. when you have your research paper written. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to go back to clinical practice, mm -hmm. but that's one. 
Mm-hmm. And particularly the research I've, I'm doing in family-centered care, where I also include parents, mm-hmm. is that you have to report back to the parents. Mm-hmm. Um, besides that's a compulsory in any um, institutional review board research protocol. I was going to ask you that. Is that required? That is required okay. in Holland. If it is so an you have to have a, a path or a mechanism, A mechanism right? to go back okay. to, your, to your respondents of your study. So for us, it was the parents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I've done it besides individually. I also have done it. I went back to the... Um, we have an organization, and many countries have this organization, where it's called uh, the organization Child and Hospital. That's a parental organization where you can write uh, small, pro- small articles in their journals, in their newsletters, the results of your research. So it becomes a, an awareness of the research of, of, of us in the hospital, mm-hmm. in all hospitals, what we've done, but it, it spreads out through all um, the community because Mm -hmm. these parent organizations have newsletters and the newsletters go out to all parents Mm -hmm. whose child has had that's wonderful uh, Mm -hmm. admitted Mm -hmm. so maybe what we can do um, is really just talk about your results so I feel not only the topic and how you carried this out but the results I think um, and I want your 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 feedback on this were surprising in some instances but maybe first let's talk about what were the major themes um, that emerged from this whole idea of developing a tool to measure um, parent satisfaction? Yeah, and so, so we talk about family-centered care, and mm-hmm. what, what we wanted to do is not only to, to picture actually what is to capture the, what is family-centered care, what kind of conceptual domains can we mm-hmm. find from, from surveys, large surveys to parents, can we find from interviews? We've had a, mm-hmm. a large uh, interview qualitative study done. done. Um, we also looked at diaries um, um, and asked parents for the lift experiences. Tell me the story. Mm-hmm. So we, we, la- mm-hmm. we want to capture what kind of domains. Mm-hmm. So from the um, interviews of the parents, we mm-hmm. were able to qualitative analyze it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we found actually that the whole system of family-centered care related to what parents found important uh, were related in f- six domains. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the domain communication management, information management, um, there's parental participation, there is emotional intensity, professional um, attitude, as well as the organizational uh, environment. Mm. So from this these interviews, uh, we were able to look at surveys and what parents and, and healthcare professionals found quite interesting as well. And similar concepts emerged mm-hmm. from these surveys. What happened then, if you have a cohort of ideas from parents and healthcare professionals of what is important for them, we then try to translate it uh, into a survey that becomes actually our empathic, the empowerment of parents in the intensive care questionnaire. And the empathic questionnaire actually uh, ended up as an instrument measuring the experiences and satisfaction of parents in the intensive care. Mm-hmm. In this instrument, we have five domains. Um, we left out actually the domain a- emotional intensity the argument for leaving out this domain is actually that we believe there are enough validated questionnaires already available that measure stress levels, anxiety levels, okay. so that's and emotional how intensity. that was described. Okay. That is already done okay. and described. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so you have these domains, and 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 how do you actually? Um, how do you actually define them? What are the things that kind of fall in? If you can give us some examples of uh, things that actually relate to these domains, how was that operationalized? And if I'm correct, it was both parents and healthcare professionals that helped you operationalize that? Or correct. How, how, how did yeah. that work? Well, we started off with operationalizing is that you have the domains, mm-hmm. and then we try to... Uh, conceptualize within the domain several statements, issues that belong and are actually coherent to the domain. Okay. 
we started off in, in a group of pro professionals. Mm -hmm. um, we then actually went onwards to a Delphi study. Mm -hmm. The Delphi study was a large group of nurses and doctors. We asked, tell me what is, what is important mm -hmm. for you, what is mm -hmm. happy, what mm -hmm. is important for you, and tell me the concepts. Mm -hmm. We then qualitatively came to several statements and all these, not several, but about almost 90 statements. Yes. From yes. the 90 statements. Very impressed with that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's yeah. what we, I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, I mean that's the reality, right? The, the complexity of pediatric yeah. critical it was, care. It really is, spoke truth to me when yeah. I saw that much, yes. And, and we thought that having over 90 is possibly too much. Yes. But we give it back in the second mm -hmm. Delphi round to the nurses and doctors that tell me, try to organize a list the importance of mm -hmm. these topics. Mm -hmm. And we try to find consensus by a third questionnaire round where we give them all back the results and mm -hmm. say, listen, these are the results of the group mm -hmm. of all the 329 nurses and doctors. Mm -hmm. This is how, how, how they feel, and uh, try to rate it again. Mm -hmm. And we came after three rounds of Delphi uh, questionnaires, mm -hmm. we came actually to the, to the whole list of 90 something, 92 92, items, I believe, yes. Which we already then uh, categorized in the domains, uh, like I said, domain information, um, domains parental participation, we have the domain of organization, mm -hmm. and professional attitude, mm -hmm. and the care and treatment. Mm -hmm. What are the commonly known domains of family-centered care in pediatric nursing? The correct answer is respect, information, coordination of care, physical support, emotional support, involvement in care. Now, so, so now you have your beautiful tool, and you now do what with it? What, what, what was that next thing that you did? You have developed this tool, and now what was that next step? In the process of our empathic journey mm -hmm. <laughs> is that we, that we had a cohort studies done. So we have first it, and if, if conceptualized the domains, mm -hmm. uh, uh, identified the statements. We've checked that with the parents in qualitative studies. Mm -hmm. We also went back with this list to the parents mm -hmm. and listen, how do you rate these 90 over mm -hmm. statements? What are they all important for mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that part becomes quite interesting because over a thousand parents, uh, we asked them to rate all these questions. And we, again, we had a high response rate between uh, some multi-center studies, somewhere between 52 and 60. 67 percent. Impressive. So we, mm -hmm. we were able to, to make a priority list based on, on the views of the parents on these family-centered mm -hmm. care issues. Mm -hmm. Even more interesting than mm -hmm. became, we have two data sets, the yes. importance of professionals and the parents, yes. so we could look at the differences. I, I love that you did that. And so, so what did you find? What was, what was the big finding? Yeah, this, this I don't think there was more, just one though. So what were the correct. things that really spoke to you when you saw yeah. both of these together now? Yeah. So in the group of the parents uh, whose child has been admitted to the pediatric intensive care, there was a third of mm -hmm. the 90 statements. Mm -hmm. So 31 statements that show significant differences mm -hmm. between the views of the parents and the healthcare professionals. So 31 is already quite a lot. Basically, the top, the top highest rated by parents was actually information management about medication. Mm -hmm. That parents highly appreciate that the correct medication is given at the correct timing. Mm -hmm. This charge management was actually enormous important mm -hmm. for them because they experienced possibly some differences. Um, as well as um, the importance of participating in medical and care treatment of their child. Mm -hmm. So these were the issues where significantly were higher mm -hmm. scored by the parents instead of the healthcare professionals.
What topics in PICU or NICU find parents significantly more important than physicians and nurses? The correct answer is correct medication administration and discharge planning. Now, now, were you surprised by that? Because when I read that, I was impressed that, you know, safety was important to the families. Yeah. Um, things that we talk about here in the United States as far as a handoff, thinking about the discharge process of yeah. now we're handing off that baby to them, you know, um, and just that ongoing conversation of care and treatment. So were you surprised by any of those findings? Or, um, or, or maybe not. I, I, I wondered what you thought. So here you are, you see this, yes, you know, yes. and it was so striking, I yeah. thought, the way that parents were really communicating that. Yeah, for certain issues, for example, uh, that parents found discharge planning mm -hmm. uh, and more important than we are, mm -hmm. um, I was not that surprised because we all know if I would talk to colleagues, yes, we think that discharge planning could be done better. Mm -hmm. So although we, there was a significant difference, um, basically, but, but, but for us it wasn't, it wasn't that important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, there were two statements about the medication. Mm -hmm. uh, parents rated very high that they want to be informed about the medication, uh, information about the medication. Mm -hmm and they want the correct medication given at the correct timing. Mm -hmm. um, these were significantly lower scored by the nurses and the doctors, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. parents extremely found it extremely mm -hmm. uh, important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was surprised, and everyone, when I talk about these results, was surprised as mm -hmm. well. There's one little uncertainty about the timing we've done the survey. Mm -hmm. At time of the survey, we had some uh, big issues in the Dutch healthcare system that there were some articles in the newspaper and the national TV that some patients were dying because of wrong medication. So what happens already, I think this is the perfect example that we all know, mm -hmm. have to acknowledge that parents will be influenced and are influenced by right. this media and right. the social society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can have our professional views, mm -hmm. but we must acknowledge that parents have their own views that are influenced by the media, the news, the newspapers, the neighbors and other family members. There is a whole ongoing evolution going on which we cannot stop and which we have to acknowledge actually. Mm -hmm. What is a new quality indicator or patient reported outcome metric to measuring the overall quality of care in the PICU or NICU? The correct answer is parent satisfaction. So, so I, I think something that really needs to be described by you is the actual, the empathic and empathic N. And, and maybe you could really just share what, what is that and you know, how, how does that play a role in how yeah. we think about the care of our patient and families? Well, all our efforts to, to, to have a clear understanding of what family-centered care is um, into clinical practice mm -hmm. and have this uh, evaluated by the parents as a parent reported outcome measure, we were able to, to, to develop um, a questionnaire which is called the EMPATIC. EMPATIC mm -hmm. stands for Empowerment of Parents in the Intensive Care. Mm -hmm. We developed one specifically for pediatric critical care and one for neonatal critical care. I think that um, what was um, very symbolic about how you refer to the tool is the word empowerment and how so much of what we believe can support optimal outcomes, right, is really empowering, not just our frontline staff, but again, our partners, our parents. And so I love this idea of empowerment. And, and you know, what does that mean? How, how does that translate itself in the tool? Well, it's... I thank you very much for the question because I really uh, enjoy the concept of empowerment. Uh, yeah. 
it's, it's the word spot on. empowerment is maybe new. We use it all over the world, mm -hmm. and it's in some countries it's not even translated. It it keeps on is being. Is that the right? Need. We use empowerment in our Dutch language. Okay. So in Holland, for us, empowerment becomes a, a, a common word. We don't translate empowerment. Um, what I feel is that the empowerment of parents is we provide them a validated tool mm -hmm. to allow us to report back actually how they experience mm -hmm. the care with us in the hospital. Mm -hmm. This is a system, it's a, a, a easy to do system where you really give parents and allow parents to say hello I don't like this and this and this or hello I don't like what you've done mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. so it's the system is actually related back to empowerment is to allow mm -hmm. parents to report back to tell me mm -hmm. what they feel mm -hmm. and by developing the instrument the mm -hmm. both instruments we believe that now, we have now a system in place with the empathic um, uh, questionnaires mm -hmm. where we can report back to all the units mm -hmm. uh, every three months what, what the parents have and how the parents have experienced the care in your unit. Mm. So this is, you would say, every three months we report it back in a newsletter, uh, we report back the results. Uh, we also report back, back the narratives because in our empathic questionnaire we ask the experiences of parents, mm -hmm. tell me your story. Mm -hmm. And these narratives, we look at the narratives which really make sense and to wake up like, oh, mm -hmm. I never know that parents experience the care like that. Right. I might change that. So you wake up the, 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 the colleagues mm -hmm. in our newsletter. It challenges the given, I think. How can parent satisfaction be measured and evaluated? The correct answer is using a validated parent satisfaction questionnaire. In so many ways. I, so it sounds to me this is how you have made this part of practice, this, this validated forum that yeah. you invite families to really help us think about that experience yeah. and, and you do it in a way that allows people to interpret and, yeah. and, and now you have something that you can actually maybe go and do something. Yeah. You know, how can we do something to improve that experience? So is that, am I correct that that has become part of practice yeah. or am I, yeah. so not research? Although maybe you use no, I, research. It, this it is started practice. off, I, I fully agree, it started yeah. off as a, as a research program. Yes, yes. Uh, however, uh, this year we would say it's not a research program anymore. It's an official nice. recognized quality yeah. indicator. Yes. It's the parent experiences and satisfaction is currently mm -hmm. in Holland, but it, not even in Holland. If you look at the papers, it's in the US, it's mm -hmm. in all over Europe. Mm -hmm. You need to register your patient satisfaction, and we do that according to our empathic questionnaire mm -hmm. by measuring parent satisfaction and their experiences. So it's a quality indicator. Mm -hmm. um, so now it becomes standard practice. It is simply standard Wonderful. practice. Wonderful. The good thing is if you share it, uh, mm -hmm. Like the Dutch situation, if we have eight university hospitals, mm -hmm. you all do it. We all do it in all eight uh, university hospitals, so we are able to have this massive data coming in from the parents, over three thousand from the pediatric mm. critical care a yearly. This is fabulous. So we have we have over three thousand responses coming back, and you can share and benchmark mm -hmm. the results per center, mm -hmm. and then. In a yearly basis, we meet and all pediatric care departments, they meet together and we try to learn from each other and try to improve the care based on the results on one ICU who has higher scores in my ICU and then tell me mm -hmm. what are you doing, why you have higher scores and we try to investigate this and mm -hmm. try to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. I think this system is currently in place, it's set. Um, it's also, since this year, incorporated in the national database for pediatric outcome measures. So I think, yes, we're getting slowly to, to the, I would say, the importance and 
um, giving a higher value of the empowerment of parents, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, telling us what to do and how to improve our care based on their experiences. I, I, I can tell you, um, I mean, the success story continues, actually. It's oh, please tell only, us. Tell it's us. It's not only uh, in, in Holland. As mm -hmm. I said, we were lucky as a team of eight university hospitals mm -hmm. starting off this multi-center study. Mm -hmm. At a time just before that um, satisfaction became an important quality indicator and mm -hmm. that patient satisfaction and family mm -hmm. satisfaction was recognized. So we were actually, we were lucky with the choice of mm -hmm. our, our research topic that mm -hmm. we, we, we acknowledged the lack of a validated instrument measuring family-centered care and family satisfaction related to the family-centered care and patient-centered patient care where, where we were able to um, validate uh, or develop and validate a questionnaire but the success story goes actually further on that within two years the past two years when we finished the validation uh, mm -hmm. process and published our papers is now that we have um, in Norway, in Switzerland, in Italy, in China, oh my goodness. in Korea, in um, UK, Croatia. Well, I can't. I can continue for another ten countries. We have almost twenty countries which are using or meanwhile translating in their own language the empathic questionnaire. So this is any. This this gets a the world a world issue. What we're now trying to do is even in within Europe try to establish a European database for all empathic um, empathic data, mm -hmm. so we can benchmark not only within a country but also benchmark the empowerment of parents throughout several countries mm -hmm. within Europe. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, the success continues, and uh, it's, it's amazing how how the enthusiasm of all the colleagues are there. Mm -hmm. Who will make it success? It's mm -hmm. not me. No, it's it's yeah. it's all but my providing colleagues. the forum through science. I think that's so yeah. important. How we um, how we move practice forward, right? Yeah. And the tools yeah. that we do that with. And I think yeah. your your story tells so much of how we move that practice forward with science yeah. and and how taken that route. I think people immediately understand the thoughtfulness, right? And and, yeah. and buy in. I am amazed at the global, the global embracement. I think it's something that is so important to all of us around the world, right? This world shared view. Yeah. I think that these things um, really do translate, you know, across. Yeah. What has impressed me about this story is that the way that you showed the value is by the rigor of the science. Yeah. And I think that that value is seen not only with our parents, right, by the response rate, but also that you've been able to make this a collaborative, right? So this yeah. is not just one center's voice. Yeah. You have multiple yeah. voices yeah. that really can, I think, accelerate, right, that patient yeah. experience to a level. And I, I congratulate you on that. I think yeah. that as a researcher myself, I think things that hold the most meaning is where you can actually see it as see. part of yeah. practice of how we think about our patients yeah. every day and I think that is just such a wonderful example this experience you just described. So I, I'd like to thank you again for sharing your work with us here in this forum and, and, and really look forward to more. Really look forward to hearing more from your program of research. So thank you Dr. Latour. Okay, it has been my pleasure. Thank you very much.